Anyways, it's about like what, 8.30 right now? Ooh, nine o'clock already. Time to get the day started. All right, let's get started. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fulfish channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I just walked one hour and 10 minutes to get to this fishing spot here. I haven't even started fishing yet and I'm already exhausted, but gather around, gather around, cause Papa APF got some good news for you all. If you watched the previous video on the YouTube channel, you saw that I caught some mystery chubs from the Roanoke River yesterday. So last night I went back to the hotel and I consulted with my friend Fletcher, AKA NC Fishing on Instagram. And he actually showed me, I mean, he actually shared some very good data on how to differentiate, right? The blue head chub, the Nokomis leptocephalus from the bull chub, the Nokomis ranei. I got that data. I compare photos, especially of the males, right? The top of the head, the top of the head was like so important to differentiate them. And I finally came to the conclusion, 100% certain that one of those samples was a bull chub, all right? A species 289. I know that for a lot of you, right? It is just a fish, right? Hey, Tom, what is the stuff that I caught just here, right? Oh, Bob. That is just a minnow. What do you think, Jerry? Uh, that's just a shiner. What do you think, John? Bait. <laughs> I know this is how people usually do it, right? But for me, I'm a life listener. It's a little bit different. I need to pursue, right? I need to find out what exactly they are so that I can add it to my life list. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, all jokes aside, right? But today's day two of the Roanoke series. I am at a fishing spot that you guys are way too familiar with. Maybe it doesn't look so familiar from this angle, but last winter, meaning January or February of this year, I did my intro right over there, right? And I fished this hole right over here where I caught my lifer white shiner, right? The Luxilus albeolus. So I am back at the Thinker Creek. And today I, mean, I am still going to be focusing, of course, on the suckers, but I also want to focus a little bit on the shiners and the daughters, especially the daughters. After all, there is a daughter around here that I don't have yet. The Roanoke daughter. I really want that one. So today, now I'm just messing. Let's get, you know what? Let's get the fishing session started with some micro fishing and see what happens. Oh yeah, two little theme. The split shots and we got here a tiny tiny owner half moon tanago hook right with just a little tiny piece of worm uh, you guys know that i ain't playing when i tied on the tanago hook okay we're going to get started with some minnows and with some daughters because the light the light is really good I mean, you got to realize that when you fish clear creeks like this, the majority of fishing that you do for micros is sight fishing, right? So the light is so good right over here that, yeah, we're going to focus on those for now. Now, look at that. First target of the day. Got a little, some kind of shiner right over here. Let's see if it's going to bite. Let's see if it sees the worm. Oh yeah, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. You got it, and I got him. First target of the day. I don't know what it is yet, but first and foremost, let's put it in the photo tank, and then we shall properly identify our little fella here. Oh boy, first fish of the day is already giving me hard time. Look at that. Will you look at this little fella here? I have absolutely no clue what it is right it looks like one of those juvenile of those little mystery chub that i caught yesterday in the roanoke river i kid you all not no idea no clue but anyways uh, this is our first sample of the day for now i'm going to call this mystery chub one now you know what let me just let me just release it over here for you guys anyways right because oh boy 
have it another view of it inside the water. And let's just open the cap so that it can swim off, right? Where, where, where is it? Where is it? You are free, buddy! Is it smart enough to actually get out of the photo tank? It's kind of checking. Let me flip it. If I flip, it's going to get out. Look, 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 look. Yo, for real, bro. Yeah, just follow. Just go with the flow, yeah? <laughs> go with the flow, boy. When you're microfishing creeks like this, never take anything for granted. That is the key. When you look down there, every minnow looks the same. Or the majority. The thing is, you need to catch it so that you can properly identify it. And who knows, it may just be a new species, right? Oh, I see, I, I think I see a daughter right over there. Got him. Wow, this is unbelievable. It's a chain, it's a chain back daughter. Holy moly. The lifer that I caught yesterday, I ended up catching it again today. <laughs> this is the thing about life listing. Yesterday, I was so excited about landing this little fella, you know? I was like, whoa, chain, chain back daughter, right? New species, lifer. Today, it's like, eh, it's just, it's just another daughter, right? Give me, give me my my Roanoke daughter. So there we go, huh? Let me get the air out of the photo tank. How do you like the new micro fishing release? Pretty cool, huh? Put in the photo tank to practice over here. You guys can see the fish kinda in its natural environment, right? I don't even know why I never thought of this idea before. And then you just open the photo tank and you flip it and hopefully the daughter is going to find its way. Look, 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 slowly, but it's steadily. Ah! Ah, found it, huh? Now it's just chilling right there on the bottom, right? If I touch it a little bit, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, oh yeah, slowly go back to the rock. Well, all right, that was fish number two of the day, but where's my Roanoke daughter? Well, if it is, the, if the chain back is around here, chances are there's got to be a Roanoke one around as well, right? Oh, got something a little bit bigger on the Tanago. Not the daughter that I was looking for. This looks like one of those white shiners. Yep, that's definitely one of those white shiners that I caught earlier this year. It's species number three of the day. Wow, they are very, very beautiful from the top. You know what? I'm going to give you guys a full view of this guy after I take a shot. Let me fill the photo tank with water over here real quick because I want to give you guys a top view of this fella, if possible, okay? It's got very nice features on top of it, like a golden line. So you know what? Let me just release it, put it back here, fill it up, okay? Now let me try to give you guys a, a top view. Let's see if we can do this right. I don't know, I need to work on the angles. Do you guys see the golden line? Is it possible to see that golden line? It's got a beautiful golden line on the side and on top of its body. You see that? Oh man, you can see the full features of the fish. Pretty cool, man. All right, white shiner. It's time for you to go. You are free, free from the clutches of the evil age. <laughs> Dude was just chilling down there, you know? Probably just uh, looking for food, right? Saw the Tanago, and then it's like, whoa! Came to an entire new world, man! Oh, he was looking at it. He tried to get it. Tried to get it. He got it. And I got him. That's the trade, my brother. You get it, and I get you, and we'll find out what you are now. Got a little daughter in my hands. Not so sure what it is, though. I always tell you all that catching them is only the first step. 
when it comes to these critters because the next step comes to identify it now let me tell you sometimes you catch so many of those little ones right especially the daughters that you keep looking at the stuff right over here and you you don't even know what they look like anymore everything starts looking the same i landed this little guy and then i thought yo this kind of looks a little bit like a tessellated art or the etiostoma homestead right but then i kind of thought to myself i don't even know if they have tessellated daughter over here or not so i kind of thought of the second option the fantail daughter right the etiostoma flavillati but i looked at the dorsal fin over here and this particular sample doesn't have those stubby short dorsal fins that the fantail has this is definitely not a chain back daughter the one that we just caught i mean they're totally different from one another so at the end i don't know what it is i'm just going to call it mystery daughter so let's release our mystery daughter right over here at first glance this really does look like a tessellated daughter so i would take it as a tessellated daughter because i don't know what else it could possibly be i have caught a lot of tessellated daughters up in the northeast so i mean i've seen them and this one certainly does look like one look the patterns on the body right kind of screams tessellator i just wish that they weren't here you know what i'm saying <laughs> always wishing that it was a different species uh little fella you're gonna stay inside the photo tank forever i'm giving you freedom my man just go yeah 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 find your way dude find your way that's it that's it you found you found your way didn't it? it's a beautiful creature i gotta say though I've been microfishing for the past 45 minutes or so. I ended up catching three more species over here that I already have on my life list. Let's see, you know what? Let's see how good you guys are when it comes to identifying this fish. Huh? You guys ready for that multi species photo tank underwater shot? <laughs> All right, let's do it. That's what's up, man multi-species photo tank time let's see how they behave under the water yeah let me get the air out of the photo tank yo that's a beautiful view you got you got like how many different species in there you got four different species in there right you got two of those chain back daughters oh the bluegill is already trying to get out right all right there you go let's see who's gonna be the first one blunt nose minnow Blunt nose minnow is gone. Second one. Who wants to bet? Hey, I thought the bluegill was going to be the first one for sure. Eee, bro, this is taking too long. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, bluegill. Bluegill went away. And now we got the spot tail shiner. The spot tail shiner gone. And of course, the daughters, which are the creatures who usually live around the rocks, right? Kind of bottom fish. They, they, they are the, you know, bottom of the tank trying to get their way out this one here yeah man you're the slow one iq <laughs> no not the brightest one huh not the brightest one and my night crawler right over here easy the night crawler we still need to catch more of you guys originally i was going to microfish just a little bit more and then switch gears and just uh soak bait right here in this deep hole right for the moxostoma species the suckers see if there are some suckers around here but you know what after seeing so much biodiversity i kind of changed my mind i'm going to hop spots right from this place where i'm fishing a little bit more upstream if you guys remember there was an area with a huge dam i shot a video over there during the during the winter time we're going to go over there soon to check if finally i can catch one of those roanoke daughters ladies and gentlemen i was going to leave i promise you i was going to leave but then i believe i just saw a species over here that i don't have yet i believe it is a species of cyprinella and the bad news is that i only saw one is swimming around here in the currents one not two not three not a school only one the good news is it is still around here so i will attempt to catch it now 
why is it that the rare ones it's always only like one sample in the whole pool I lost track of it I don't see it anymore now I have to kind of look around until I find it there's only one and that fish being swimming right around this area Got him, got him, got him! <laughs> oh yeah, hell yeah! Tanago under a float boy, what are these? This is the weird one that I saw down there. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Is that just a commonly shiner? Is this what I've been going? Wait a moment, no, wait, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. <sighs> Sometimes the struggle is truly real. There's a little shiner right over here. I saw a bunch of them swimming around, right? Right over there. But they are in the middle. They don't get to the corners here. So I thought, maybe it is a species of Ciprinella, right? I have never ever used the Tanago hook under a float. So I decided to tie a float, look, on the Tanago line, right? With just two team split shots in the Tanago and boom, it came up. Not a Ciprinella though. Huh, now that's a pretty interesting one. I just messaged the photos of that fish that I just caught to my friend Fletcher in Sea Fishing. Always good to have an expert in the field to kind of, you know, talk to. Easier than hitting the books for sure. I will hit the books, of course, when I go back to Philadelphia, but I would like to give a big shout out and a big thank you to Fletcher for helping me identify a lot of the species that I have caught yesterday and today here in Roanoke, Virginia, okay? Uh, anyways, I just sent him the photos and he tells me that that fish does not look like a commonly shiner, the Notropis amoenus, to him. He tells me that that fish actually looks to him like a rosy fin shiner, which is a species of the Litrurus genus. Now, if you pay close attention here on the YouTube channel to the genera, you know that recently I went to Tennessee and I actually landed a fish called the Scarlet Shiner, right? It was the Litrurus fasciolaris, kind of cousin to the rosy thing. The thing is, I didn't see any warm color coloration on the sample that I landed just now, right? It could be that the sample is a male or female outside of the spawning season, which is why it doesn't have that color, but I want to catch another one. Just to confirm, I don't want to add anything on my life list if I'm not like 100% sure of it. So we're gonna keep the float on the Tanago and see if we can land another one of those. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's uh, definitely easier said than done, you know? It's not like this creek is filled with those little shiners that, that I'm looking for. So I don't know if I will be able to catch another one or not. The interesting thing about this particular shiner is that they feed more towards the top of the water and they actually shine white under the water when I use my polarized lenses. So it is easier to find them. But there's only like two here, three over there. Right now, I don't see them at all. Oh, I think they're over there. Yep, I think, I think they're over there. I, I got something, I got something. I got something, boy, I knew it. I saw them over there. Is it another one? Yeah, it is another one of those, boy! I'm on fire, boy! Oh, I don't want to mistreat this dude. Photo take. Where's the photo take? Hell yeah, dude. You see, you see. No, bro. You guys don't understand. Yo, you guys see me freak out over little fish. Like, you guys don't understand, man. You know how I located those? I, I couldn't see those fish over there. You know how I located it? I just saw, like, the, the water, right? Make a little book like that. And I knew that there were fish coming to the top to get it. So I cast my Tanago float right over there and boom, later you know, this dude came up. That's what's up. Yo, man, that's what's up. That's what's up. You see, you see that little rat there? You see that little rat there? Oh, can't see, huh? All right, no problem, man. I got you covered. Look at that. 
Look at that red on that thing on top right over there. You see that? Oh, this ain't no commonly shiner, boy. This ain't no nootropis. As it turns out, it is a Litrurus, indeed. I am going to open now the photo tank. Check it out. Oh my goodness. Ooh, boy. No wonder, man. No wonder. The commonly shiner around my area, they never shone white under the water, right? I thought it was strange. Thank you, Fletcher. Now I double checked. It's species 290. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about that Roanoke daughter, but one thing I do know, and that is when you are out here chasing new species of fish, or I guess just fishing in general, time passes really fast. I just looked at my, at my phone, it is already one o'clock, yo! You catch a little daughter over there, you catch a little shiner over here, one o'clock, that's crazy. So needless to say, I need to go get some lunch. I am hungry, I am dehydrated, almost running out of water. Three new species of fish so far during this Roanoke summer trip. That is not bad. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not bad at all, considering that I still have a few more hours today and a full day tomorrow, right? The exploring and the fishing is going well. Now, <laughs> I know that the micro fishing is not a cup of tea for a lot of people here on the YouTube channel, which is why if you watch this entire video, I would like to give you a big thank you for all the love and support. Micro fishing is part of life listing, so it is very important to life listers, you know? And I hope the new release system, right? With a photo tank underwater, kind of adds a little bit more, you know, to the excitement, right? And the entertainment in the YouTube videos. When the water is clear and you see the underwater footage, you can actually see the fish in its natural environment, right? With, with, with its underwater features, which I thought it was pretty cool five years I've been doing YouTube man only this year I thought about it. it's crazy <laughs> anyways it is time to go thank you very much fellas I'll see you all next time guidelines and take it easy